Hey, Network Next Gen. Welcome to my home. Come on in. So we are in my multifunctioning living area. It's kind of a one room, serves all purposes. This is my dining nook. Uh, it's been a labor of love. I decided to do a DIY that didn't turn out as I wanted, but I actually love it even more. And I had this travertine top that I've kind of held on to for probably two years. I thrifted it years ago and it just needed something better. Because ultimately what happened was the base for this got upcycled for my coffee table top when that one was found and got chopped down to a different height than your living room lounge with your TV, movie kind of hangout, or even still like game night around. I do like having game nights. Then that brings us to this little niche area, which is now my new workspace. I once had an office in a separate area, but that's evolved with the business, and this is now out in the sunny area where it's a lot easier to work and a lot more light. I handmade this desk out of a lot of recycled, old vintage office bins and card catalogs, a nice piece of live edge pine that's old and not dried properly, and the base I welded. Um, and I just love working in a space that's full of greenery and a lot of natural daylight. It makes life and work so much easier and happier to do. One of my favorite features of my living room is my wooden floral hanging arrangement of sorts. My really good friend Natalie Pappas of Studio Poppy made this arrangement honestly four years ago, but it's a dried arrangement so it can hang out here forever and I can just keep building or adding on to it. The latter was a friend of mine moved out of state and he actually made it by hand, which was really badass. So this is kind of like almost like an altar to just like zen stace. I come here, I hang out, I zone out, I, I doodle, I write or whatever. But this is kind of that sort of lounge space at nighttime. So we're in my little heart of the home, my kitchen. It's really tidy, but it is mighty with personality. Um, I'm probably really proud of this moment because I actually did the tile myself. But this kitchen was kind of blah before. It was mostly just gray, a white wall. This is the darkest area of my home in this living space, so try to give it a little pop with the color. Most of these items that have been added to it are thrifted. Almost all my kitchen stuff is vintage. I prefer to use vintage glassware and everything, and everything that's out and around is because it's fully functioning every day for me cooking-wise. So I try to keep things grabbed, like this is a spice rack made from two industrial grates that were probably on the roof of some building in Chicago and added the bar for my pots and pans, nothing crazy there. So another thing that you might see that isn't so common is my ceiling mural. The ceiling in here, whoever once did this building and this rental, did not use flat white, like every ceiling in Chicago ever. So when I painted the patch, it didn't match at all, and that led to the beauty of this eye mural becoming a focus on it, to take your eye away from it, but also beautify it. We are now in the, I don't know what to call this room. It's kind of the work storage room, secondary office space, guest bedroom. It's kind of whatever I need the day of. But these areas are still kind of in zones for functionality. Like this is secretly storing a lot of vintage supplies that are being sold or are listed somewhere. This is all hardware, materials of paint, things that I am physically using to do things. And then the closet detail area is kind of all of my work materials, like tile, fabric, stone, things like that that are just kind of stored in there. The bookshelf is one of my favorite pieces. So is this big chest of drawers that served me a lot of storage purposes. I have this fabulous corner settee that my mom had given me and I don't know where she got it, but it's never leaving our family from here on out. Either I'm keeping it or she's gonna keep it but it just gives it this kind of retro California laid back vibe. And that's like kind of what I'm aiming to do in all of my spaces is just feel like I'm teleporting or transporting to some other city outside of Chicago, especially when it's cold. So yeah, this is this cool kind of eclectic vintage room. Now we've made it to the bedroom where, you know, magic and rest happen mostly, but um, the color choice was mostly for the sleep and just like orange is my favorite color, so obviously. This is usually a taboo, like don't put your room, your bedroom in the corner or whatever, feng shui, I get it. But this room isn't that big and I need it to function for a lot more than just a bedroom. It's kind of created this bedroom space over here and like what I call sort of like my walk-in closet because I don't have a walk-in closet in two different fields without feeling overwhelming, I would say. There's a mural that I collaborated with a friend named Amy Day, so shout out Amy for coming through on that. This trunk I bought off Marketplace for like 20 bucks and ended up being my friend's cousin from childhood, which was crazy. And 
everything else, like headboard wise, my friend Allie made the custom pillows for me on, a, on the dime and all the headboards are custom made by me. This is like the room I like to call my like paradise South America West Coast room because I like to wake up and feel like I'm not in Chicago again. That's a big pinpoint in this whole apartment and this one makes me feel like I'm kind of like in South America or something and I really like that. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming. I'll see you guys later.